Mark, the third chapter, the 20th verse. Then the multitude came together again so they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub. The father of the demons, he cast out demons. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, See how Satan cast out Satan. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. As a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man, and then he will plunder his house. A house divided against itself cannot stand. That's why the church, this body, needs to put aside every little personal problem and pull together to win souls for the kingdom of God. For a house divided itself cannot stand if someone is not running with the flow of the church and someone will not get into the boat and row when you're rowing upstream, which we are in Johnson County, when you're rowing upstream, you don't need anybody in there dead weight pushing the paddle the other way. You ain't going to get very far that way. And this church is a Holy Ghost, aisle stomping, pew kicking, crazy for Jesus, radically saved church. And we see miracles happen because we believe what we preach. And we need to practice what we preach. For if the house is divided against itself, it cannot cast out the devils. Jesus could not be possessed to the devil and cast out the devil. So before you start tangling with devils, you've got to get the devils out of your life. Otherwise, you can't. Contend with them. You're powerless. Now, I've seen a lot of devils come out of a lot of people in the church, and I've seen a lot of growth. Perfection? No. But growth, yes. Tremendous growth in people delivered from all kinds of demonic forces. Every kind of sin imaginable to man has been done by this congregation. Even to the point that sometimes I see people say, well, well people you got over that church, they're such sinners. No, they were such sinners. Jesus says, why should I go to the ones that are well? I go to the sick that they might get healed. We were teaching in Sunday school this morning about living a life of sanctification. Ephesians and the very last couple of verses of it says that the Lord wishes that you would be wholly sanctified, body, soul, and spirit, that you might be acceptable unto the Lord on the day that he comes. That means you can get better. So that there's less division. Look at, there's more to it than just the church. The church must be in unity. But before the church can be in unity, the people in the church themselves have to be in unity inside in their spirit. Inside in their spirit. James says a double-minded man shall receive nothing from God. Doubt will tear you down. Why do you think I act so bold? If I didn't, I might doubt something. Boldness. Is a sign of lack of doubt. Doubting will turn you into a little wimp. 
all the time thinking, well, maybe God could help me, but I don't know if he will help me because I don't know. I'm such a wimp. Believe in it. So it starts within yourself. Jesus was not filled with the devil. He was wholly sanctified because he was literal God and man at the same time. And that there was nothing lacking in him. He was able to cast out the devils by the power of the living God himself. Not by the power of the devil. So get the devils out of your life. Get yourself in unity. Get yourself in unity. I mean, don't, don't lie to me. Raise your hand if you don't occasionally get double-minded. If you do, I mean, if you do. You get double-minded. You doubt. Now, what am I going to do with that? I'm, I don't have it much anymore. The longer you walk in the faith and the more you time you spend with God and the more things you go through and the more fiery trials that you survive, the less doubt you have that's God going to bring you through. Amen? The less doubt. But it's the enemy that speaks doubt. Jesus says take every thought in subjection. If you start doubting, you take it in subjection and cast it out in the name of Jesus. You take that doubt and you let it manifest in your mind and you let it start to work. Pretty soon, thoughts that aren't brought under subjection will manifest into full-blown sin. Full-blown sin, you'll be in a mess. Because if you keep thinking about it sooner or later, it starts with a vein of, starts with an arrow from the devil. <laughs> Shoots it in your ear. Puts a thought in your poor little punkin mind. <laughs> and then it goes in there. And you think about it. I so often use my illustration of ice cream in the evening. <sighs> the devil speaks because I'm diabetic. I shouldn't eat that ice cream because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you need to make it work. Take care of it. If it needs exercise, exercise it. Just don't lay there. Yeah! My legs feel so much better after I walked about five miles yesterday. It ain't even funny. And they feel even better when I got the 300 ticks off me. <laughs> it's part of the curse. I mean, they're... Little demons everywhere. So you think about the thing. Let's say you think about, uh-oh, boys or girls, about that old girlfriend you used to have, and you know, or that old boyfriend you used to have, and you know for certain sure if you went over there and just flim flammed them just a little bit that you could be right back where you were with them back in the sack. And you know, God don't want you to do that. Because he says, if you are united to a harlot, you don't have to be a woman to be a harlot. A man can be a harlot, just the same thing. Then, and you are part of the body of Christ. You are then united, the body of Christ, with a harlot because you become one flesh and you defile the body of Christ. Just think about it. I just... It's kind of common this day and age, so we'll use this example. Just think about it. You cause Jesus to jump the fence. If he's truly in you, my, 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 my. So the thought, the enemy shoots it into your little red pumpkin head, and it's in your brain working in there, and, all, and, and so you just sit there and you know some of these thoughts sometimes I will tell you some of these thoughts sometimes are just a touch pleasurable huh I haven't walked the aisles in a long time and they're just a touch pleasurable that, that this, this thing that you, that you were thinking about the more you think about the better just like the ice cream the more I think about that chocolate ice cream the worse I want it you know and you think I'm going to beat this down in my own flesh I'll get I'll get this thing. This is fun. I'll get this thing. I'll get this thing to where 
You know, I can hold it back. I, I, got, I got the power. I don't, have to, I don't have to have it. I don't have to have it. I don't have to have it. I, well, I'll just have just a little tiny bowl. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one of them itsy bitsy teaspoons that Linda has in the drawer that we got these baby, baby teaspoons. They're just about half the size of a regular teaspoon. I get the little baby teaspoon and I'm, I'll just get a couple of teaspoons of that thing and the next thing you know. There you are, and you go to the cupboard, huh? Now you go to the cupboard, you look in the cupboard, and you get in the cupboard there. This way, this is related to every one of you as I pass by. <laughs> Did I go by you too? <laughs> I'm gonna try, I better check this pair out. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you got that giant two-quart spoon and that big, I got this big silver bowl. It's about this big around. I've watched Doug do it. And he just takes a half gallon of ice cream, throws the box in there. A whole box. And if you had rebuked that thought in the first place, and this, I mean, now we're talking about the whole box. Or who knows what. And it, it, it all depends. It could be. It could be if if you were if being delivered from smoking, you start to think about that stinking cigarette. If you're being delivered from from a deviant lifestyle, you start thinking about the deviant lifestyle. If you're being de delivered from drinking too much, and you start thinking about oh that whiskey smells good, you know or you 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 name it, you know what you ain't supposed to do. And these things come in, the thought comes in, what happens? Then you're divided against yourself. One side you're serving God, and the other side you're filled with Beelzebub. But Jesus wasn't able to be, able to be that way. Amen? And then the double-minded man receives nothing. Whew. Hallelujah. But Jesus wasn't that way. He said, no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder the goods unless he first binds the strong man and then... He will plunder his house. You need to bind the strong man when he comes towards you. You need to take a hold of him. I may ever use the lariat. A lariat. Lasso. Lariat. Yeah, same thing. It's a lasso out each. It's a lariat here. <laughs> you go like this. You get that thing around him, and you jerk it down tight, and then you take him, and you throw him down, and you take that little string and tie up his feet and leave him lay there. Bind him. The biggest trouble with most Christians, quote unquote, they're not sure they want to bind him. They kind of like a little bit of him. You know, I mean, it says without a life of holiness, you can't please God. You can't please God without a life of holiness. Obedient to the word. Life of holiness, you can't please God. And it's so many in the Christian world today are divided. They like to just see, you know, maybe I can be three-quarter Christian and one-third the world. Just keep enough world because it pleases my flesh. Amen? I don't keep a little world. I don't. I, why? If, if I start acting like you got here, this is for you on TV who thought you ought to come to this church for a long time, but you said it had the intestinal fortitude, better known as guts. Because you knew when you walked in the door that the Holy Ghost was going to strike you and you're going to have to change. That's what people don't want to do. They don't want to change. They, they want to stay divided. They want just enough God to get into heaven and all the devil they can get so they can stay here and have a good time. No wonder I'm not running a thousand. Oh, God, forgive you. He will forgive you. He'll get fed up with forgiving you after a while. You know? He'll turn. Hebrews. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. They're going to give me the unpardonable sin here yet, so don't worry about it. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation because they say he has an unclean spirit. Contributing the works of the Holy Spirit.
to the devil. Now, how could you do that? The Holy Spirit, now, that it, that has this has a broad application. And broader than a lot of people might want to work with. But number one, the first early church, if you read the Dudesh, which is the oldest piece of literature we have outside the Bible, it said that saying that the works of the Holy Spirit were of the devil was blasphemy of the Spirit. This is going on a church-wide basis. In other words, if you say speaking in tongues is of the devil, you've blasphemed the Spirit. That's what they thought at 100. I always like to get back as far as I can get and see what they thought. <laughs> if you think the gifts of the Spirit, that healing and, and uh, tongues and prophecy and interpretation and discernment of spirits and all the list in the 12th chapter of Corinthians are of the devil, that they're no longer for today, that they're of the devil. You have blasphemed the Spirit according to the which is called the instructions of the apostle, which is the oldest thing we have outside the Bible. That's what they thought at 100. How about in your personal life? The Holy Spirit speaks to you. He chastens you. And he'll get on you. He'll ride you some. And you'll say, this is too uncomfortable. That can't be God. That's got to be something else to talk to me. That ain't God. I mean, God wouldn't tell me. Oh, yes, he would. God wouldn't tell me to give up my favorite thing. God wouldn't tell me to change my entire life. God wouldn't tell me to go places I don't want to go. God wouldn't tell me to do things I don't want to do. That must not be God. My whole life has been God telling me to go places I don't want to go and tell me to do things I don't want to do. the bishop's sermon on the bitter cup. We don't want to drink it. We want a Christianity that says, oh, everything's going to be all right. All right, all right, all right, you know. He says, you shall suffer tribulation. Turmoil! It's going to hurt. There's a price to pay. You're not going to be able to titillate your flesh like your flesh got titillated when you were living in the world. But it was fun. Sin is fun for a season, but then eternal damnation is a long eternal. <laughs> it, does anybody understand eternal? I'll give it to you. You'll get this. Because for there is no time any, anymore. There'll be no more time. Eternal is like this. It's a circle. It, it's like me running around the... I, eternal is that you just keep running around the circle and it don't ever stop. Just keep going round and round and round. And, and if hell were a ball and you were running around it for a thousand years... <laughs> And you, after a thousand years, you'd only wore a groove in the ball this deep from going round and round, following the same track. You're going to run around it until you get clear in the middle, and then they're going to make it over again, and you just keep running. That's eternal. Don't quit. How can something be eternal? Because heaven and hell are outside of time. There is no time there. We're, we're on a timeline now, but it'll end. It'll just be there. We kind of feel, boy, who knows what I'll do. We kind of feel that way anyway, don't we? And there's something special about the spirit that's inside of us that I am 55 years old, but inside of me it still feels like I did when I was 25. Right? It's that thing that kind of glows around in your head, that spirit, that soulish part of you, that spirit, you just don't feel any older. But then when you try and jump across the creek and stuff like that, like all of a sudden you say, well, there's something that ain't what it, like it used to be. But, but the thing inside of you is still, 
That's what eternity is. It just goes on. What then should we do? Surely I say to you, all sins are forgiven of the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation, because they said he has an unclean spirit. Acts 2.38 says, repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Peter preached to him. How many were pricked in the heart this morning like when this preaching pricked you in the heart? Well, here's, here's the solution. Repent. Turn around. Change your mind. Change the way your head's working. Then take a step of obedience. And if you haven't been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because that's what it says in Acts 2.38. That's what Peter, Peter didn't say. Do something else. He said, be baptized. Now, does the baptizing save you? No. The repentance saves you. The baptism just proves that you're repentant. If you ain't willing, then you're probably clinging. I've watched a lot of people that refused water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I've watched them draw further and further from God. Because the Holy Spirit said to do it. He's speaking to him. The only sin, really, no, the only sin that you can't be forgiven of is something you won't repent of. You repent of your evil works and God will forgive it. If you continue to blaspheme the Spirit, you're going to go. Repent. Take Jesus serious. I'm afraid so many people in this world today, they're under the sound of my voice, take Christianity as some kind of game. Not serious. I'll play that game for a while, see if I like that one. See if it's any fun. I don't like that game, I'll go to another game. People in the town see the people running up and down the street and they say, boy, it looks like them Christians are having a lot of fun. Maybe I'll try it, see what that's like. And then later at night, they see them running out front of the street down at the Legion. They say, well, maybe we'll go down there and that party looks like it's more fun than that other party. It's not a party. It's not a picnic. It's a life-changing experience of submission to the king of the universe. And I would be blaspheming the spirit myself if I told you it was easy. I, I would. I'd be, I'd be lying. And Linda tells me every time I fib just a little bit that all liars have their place in the lake of fire. clue you. When you say you're going to do something, maybe you ought to do it. Be not divided. Be not double-minded. Repent. Double-mindedness. Repent of it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you've been double-minded. Maybe you have let Jesus come into your life and yet you cling. Maybe you're resisting that step of obedience to be baptized in water.
Right now, God's given us an opportunity to repent. Maybe you've just been playing the game. You really don't know Jesus. You're going to be the first ones. Here in the house and out there, if you really don't know Jesus, but you want to, I want to see your hand right now. You've just been playing the Christian game. Oh, I see one. I see one. I see one. My, 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 my. Put them down. Maybe you've been walking in disobedience, but you need to repent of it right now. Maybe you need to repent and take that first step into water baptism. If that's you, raise your hand. You see that hand? Okay. Come to your feet. <laughs> you got the baby. There was about three or four said they want to quit playing games. Get up here. Jesus didn't go to the cross and hide from you. He did it right in front of the world. There was a couple more hands, but they're not up here. Repeat after me. Two of you. I repent of playing the church Christian game. The Christian game. The Christian game. I am publicly confessing that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I am not ashamed. Hallelujah. You see. For anyone who would like to get saved right now and turn away from your sin, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess you right now as Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. To contact us, please go to anchoredinfaith.org and click on Contact. Then fill out the form and click on the Submit button. Someone will then contact you within a short time. Social media video platforms carrying our programming can be found by clicking on TV. The latest episode can be viewed directly on our homepage at anchoredinfaith.org. Late breaking information will be posted on facebook.com slash AIFGC. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church.